probably see this thing around my neck. That's what we're gonna be talking about today and how easy these are to actually make. But we're not gonna be making them with this little piece right there. Actually, it's gonna be looking more like this. Well, it's gonna be flat like that. This was a pre-design that comes from this, this pattern. That's what this is. It is originally where it folds itself over and it turns into this. That is how I made this version. However, I decided to go a little bit later down the line and say, hey, you know what? What if I made a better version of it? Unfortunately, it is a little smaller than this version, just by a little bit. And hey, it's still a good version. It's skinnier, it uses less fabric by like, I wanna say like maybe an inch or so. But hey, that inch of fabric can also be used in another one, which will be used in this, will be used somewhere else at the top, which is perfectly fine. So first of all, let's talk about what is a Waffle House tie. More than likely, you've probably seen the Waffle House tie worn by obviously Waffle House servers more than you've seen them by anybody else. You'll see them mostly by female Waffle House servers, but not by male servers. If you're a male server, there is no reason for you not to wear a Waffle House tie. If you want to, by all means, there's no rule against it. If you want to wear it, if you want to have like one of them that flare outward like this, that's cool. You can probably figure that out. But unfortunately, this one does drop to like right here just because whatever. And I mean, I could probably have it higher up to like right here. I was thinking about having like make one where it has like different settings and stuff to where I could do like higher up have that right there and then like you know one day I'm like you know I want to look a little fancy and like clip it a little bit higher up and it just falls like that and then make some without clips and they can just be like yeah let's just do this I don't know if you want to wear it like that by all means I say go for it there you go. I have had several different ideas for different Waffle House ties and if people want to wear them that way then by all means I know it looks simple and it really is simple let me show you some. Let me show you one that somebody else had created that my mom bought, and I did the thing with. I made the pattern out of actually. If I recall correctly, I used this one. So basically, what I did is I folded it in half, I put it on a sheet of paper, and I laid it flat, and then I traced it. That's really all you have to do for a Waffle House tie, and a lot of them are actually a lot shorter than this. They are about. The stock version from Waffle House, the basic ones, are probably about that size. This one, I, this one looks like it was eyeballed more than anything else, and here we are, basically. And this one is actually made very similarly to how mine's made, but what they did instead on this version is they made sure that the entire thing was sewn in, which is great, not a bad idea, but the reason I don't like having tips because then you end up with this for starters and you have to fold it extra and it just requires so much extra folding and I just find that that is so much extra work when creating something with a tip. If it doesn't require a tip, I say personally don't make it with a tip. I've actually gotten a lot of uh, compliments from several uh, servers that I work with at my specific Waffle House and they all say the same thing. They say they look fantastic, you do, great, you do a great job on them, blah blah blah. And right now I have, they're all hanging on my tripod because usually my tripod is holding one of my um, lights. So this is one of them that's pinned already and this will get, uh, this is probably the direction I'm gonna go today. So to start with, I'm gonna show you how to cut them out and then I'm gonna show you what I do next which is usually iron them and then I'm gonna show you how to cut them. Well, not to cut them, just to sew them. I'll get that right in a minute to sew them and then how to add a button to it. So, I've already got one pin. We'll be using this one more than likely to do. Each time I may, I can pin like up to probably six or seven at a time. But unfortunately, what I, what takes the longest amount of time between all this is probably the ironing because I'm trying to make sure that each one of these is somewhere around like a one to two centimeters of, of the inside like you saw. We're gonna just put those up right here. As you see, like this one right here, this is very. Uh, this is a good point to point. A good way to point out. They did it. Uh, I know it's really hard to see without a light, but as you can tell, right through here, it's been like that. But here, you can see this one a little bit better. So you see what that red is? That's obviously the um, stitching, the thread. But this is how this one was made, and I liked it because I gave it more of a. This has more of a 
what's the word I want to use? Not accent, it's got more of a personality in my opinion. But as you can see, on the inside, as long as this goes down and it's just enough to cover that up and to close it, that's what matters. And this is one of my first ones, which is why I wear it. For this, you're gonna need a ruler. Or, if you're smart and you went ahead and you bought everything that you need, either get an L, that, or that. Pick your device, whatever, doesn't matter. Pick whatever you want. I highly recommend getting yourself an L. L's are really good and some really good scissors. But I highly recommend one of these guys. Why? Because it's metal. And yes, it can bend, but you won't have as many problems. So we're gonna keep this right here. You've probably seen me use this once or twice before, or maybe I've talked about it. I don't remember. But what you wanna do with this is actually fairly simple. We just need a weight at the moment. I did talk about it in uh, my video about, uh, you know, the, the, my things that I use. So what I am going to explain right now is fairly simple. What we're going to do is we're going to take this guy. We're going to fold it in half and I'm just going to lay it flat somewhere. We're going to take a look at it. Okay, that looks good. So the next thing we want to do is Sharpie. So we're going to go ahead and trace this thing. Now, you more than likely will not get it right the first time, and that's perfectly okay. You're not, it's, it's a given to mess up more than once. And what I always tell people is, get yourself a giant thing of this, of uh, the paper, and you can get into the craft aisle for pretty darn cheap. It's like five bucks, and it'll become one of your best friends if you ever decide to start crafting and anything whatsoever. Stuff like this. If you're gonna start making stuff like this, this comes in handy. So what we're gonna do now, we're actually going to go over, we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna get another color. This is why I always recommend having multiple colors. All right, get multiple colors and you're all set. But in this circumstance, we're gonna give it just a little bit extra height, probably about an extra, uh, I wanna say like half, about half will be fine. So we're gonna go straight down. Go straight down, go straight across. And this is actually, you see how much further I went out on that, which is right at, right about an inch, a little bit, a little bit of an inch. So what we're gonna do is this is gonna go straight across. And what we're gonna be ending up with is half the length of this guy. It's not gonna be necessarily the same size, but I'm gonna show you how I turn it into this, which is actually really easy. But you see where that is right there? We're gonna go in and grab that little spot, and then we're gonna grab it and do right, and right there. So, now that you've got that situated, the only reason I'm going to be doing it like this for just a minute is to give the general idea of what I'm doing so you have an idea. So the only reason I'm relatively doing that is to show where the point is in the center of it. Now as you see right here, this is the general idea. Can you see it on camera? Yes, you can see it on camera, just making sure. As you see it on camera, you basically want that. But what we're, this is gonna actually be double, and it's going to turn out sort of looking like this. As you see, it almost lines up very, very close, but that's a little bit, sh actually, yeah, that is a little bit shorter. So if you wanna make it a little bit taller, I do recommend it. So you're gonna pretty much take this and you just wanna make sure that the tips are facing outwardly, is the best way to put it, but as you see, this right here, cut it off right about here. And the reason, if you're gonna put a tip on it, I say put it right there. And the reason is you want to make sure that this little tip right here is like it is, is because when you try to fold it into itself, it'll fold into a tip at some point. So you'll be like, oh, that makes sense. There you go. So double this up, fold it over, fold, like basically cut this out, redo it on another piece of paper, then fold it outward, and then you're gonna be like, oh, I see what you mean. And once you get to that point and you're like, that's good enough, look and see if you have any spare. I'm not gonna cut on this because this is literally a dice bag. I'm not even kidding, it says right there for dice bag. Do not use, don't use this. <laughs> but I'm just proving a point because I was about to, when I looked on the other side and it said dice bag, and I'm like, oh hell, don't accidentally cut onto this. And then get yourself some extra 
what I always suggest, if you're gonna do what I do, where you have this first and then you cut onto this, the best thing to do, if you have paper, grab your uh, sewing needles, pin it down, and then like cut it out and sew it. And that's where this guy is gonna come in handy. So you've got your pattern ready and it's time to make sure that you have enough fabric for it. Which one are we gonna choose? We're gonna use that. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to trace it and then I'm gonna cut it out and we're gonna go from there. So let's go ahead and trace on this. Now, before we get started, what I'm gonna recommend to you is you're always gonna to want to get at least one to two yards of whatever fabric you want because you're probably gonna make a lot of these and it's just easier to do so. The next thing you really wanna understand about this is when you try to fold it in half because when you do, and try to put this, you see where this corner is right here? Put it right there. The, the base is right here because it's gonna double up as you see with the other Waffle House ties that I've created wherever they are. As you see, it will double up as it will work because it's long enough to do it. So it will come out to be pretty good. Unfortunately, this, is at, this version is a little bit longer. So hey, whatever, not a big deal. Now it's okay to draw on the fabric on this side because you're gonna be folding it over anyways. So don't worry about it. And just make sure, as you see, I think you can see it. Let me see if we can get to a good point. Just make sure that it's slightly overlapping on each side and you're not gonna accidentally cut on it. If you have just enough fabric, well, you get the idea. And now what I do recommend is get yourself a Sharpie that's okay close to it. If you don't have a Sharpie that's close to it, a Sharpie's a Sharpie most of the time is what I tell people. The reason I'm using a Sharpie and not anything else is because it's the only thing I relatively have and let's be honest, I don't want to spend a crap ton of money on supplies that will break down anyway. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. So it's real, it's pretty easy and most of the time I try to match it up along it, but if I can't, I can't. It's not the end of the world. You're going to have so much wasted fabric anyways. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Unfortunately, sometimes they may like dry up and you may have to go, I can't see that for shit, which is fine. It happens, it's not a big deal, which is why I highly recommend a lot of times just Call it a day and use black. Black don't crack. Just use black. <laughs> so we're gonna go in and we're gonna retrace that because obviously that looked like garbage. It will happen. Don't fret. Don't overthink it. And this is a Makita, I think. I'll show you in a minute. All right. Was it Makita? My bad. Not Makita. It's Milwaukee. This is a damn good Sharpie I stole from one of my old jobs. All right, so as you can see, if that does end up happening where it's hard to tell where it's at, this is where you get out this guy. It's long and strong. Time to get the friction on. Baby got back? I don't know. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna redo it just a little bit, line it up. Good. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. What I recommend is you should always try to use as much fabric in that circumstance as possible and try to take up as, as little space as possible because then, I mean, it's obvious. You wanna to try to keep what you can, you know what I mean? It's that simple, that easy and understanding to go. You get the idea. We're not gonna be using this top piece because there's no point. So oft, often, well, more often than not, if you've worked with wood, if you've worked with any type of crafting before, you know exactly what I'm doing. Th th just think of this as, you know, any other craft. That's the best way to put it. Now, obviously, 
don't use basic kitchen scissors. Get yourself a good pair of fabric scissors. That's what you want. You want fabric scissors. Don't be that person that's like, oh, I'm just going to go get a pair of, you know, cheapo scissors. Because trust me, these scissors are literally meant to do this with. That is the entire point of what these are. And because we've got two layers here, I do want to be careful not to accidentally cut the wrong spot. We're only going to do the one for now because, well, I can do more. I just figure it's going to be easier to do it like this for the time being. Let's finish this tie up and then we're going to move on to the bluey tie to show you what I'm, how this works. Well, actually, I do have a better idea. We will continue this tie, but I'm going to sew the bluey tie only because it's ready and it'll shorten my video by a lot. But I will finish this tie and if I remember to put it in the video, I might. But uh, anytime I make anything like this, I will put it up online and I'll let anybody that wants to see it see it. If you want to check out my Etsy store, you are more than welcome to see what's all on my Etsy. Uh, these are also there, so if you are a uh, Waffle House server and you want one of these, you tell me which fabric you want and I'll make it. Now, if I don't have the fabric in stock, but you're like, can you make me a uh, Pokemon one? I see one online, blah, blah, blah. You can always send me the money through like Cash App or something and you tell me this is the one I want and I'll send you the change and I'll go get it for you. And then I'll get like a yard of it. I need about a yard to two yards of it and bam, I'll make you some. But I will be making more out of this, but as you can see right here, this is probably where my stopping point is going to be. Can you even see that on camera? No, you can't see down here. Okay, hold on, let me show you. My stop, my stopping point on this piece of fabric is going to be right here because this is, damn, still can't see it. As you can see, right through here is more than likely where I'm going to have to stop. So you know what I'm going to do real quick? Just to give myself a heads up, I might as well go ahead and cut that out real quick. I mean, granted, I could go down the line, but I've already got it folded like this, and I don't want to deal with that. And I can actually make, I could make a really nice uh, dice bag out of that section. There we go. I'm just going to put that line there to remind myself, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it off so I don't forget. I can always get more of this fabric at Joann's, which when I found out that Joann's had so much of this fabric, I was so excited. I don't know how long it's going to be there because I have noticed like a lot of us sewing nerds, we love, we're also like big Nintendo nerds and stuff, so we're going to want this at some point. I do highly recommend anytime you have any extra fabric or anything like that, I always tell people, take this fabric and iron the crap out of it. I say iron it in half and in half and in half and try to get it as small as you can and once it's ready put it in your like your your extra like this is still a decent amount I can do something I can make a nice dice bag out of this I might be able to make no nah, I wouldn't be able to I definitely couldn't this isn't long I mean it's long enough to well maybe let's find out real quick nope it's definitely not long enough it would have to go like that I mean I could probably make like a miniature tie or something like a small tie, but frankly, I think this would be better if my mom ever wanted to put some Animal Crossing stuff on her uh, aprons, which she knows I'll do it. I could make pockets. I can use this for pockets or uh, whatever. It doesn't really matter right now. But anyways, we got what we need. Let's go ahead and complete this. Check your iron. Make sure it's on. Mine is hooked to a Wise outlet, so it's just easier to work with. So what I recommend is turn on your iron. Make sure it's nice and hot before you do this. And what I did is I started having a little jug of water so I don't have to keep going and refilling that thing with anything. And that's why it has this little funnel I found. I don't even know where I got the funnel to be honest. But we are going to now continue making ties. So we're actually gonna move this guy off to the side because we don't need it right now. This is actually a lot easier than it looks. It's just time consuming. That's relatively all it is. So obviously I want to try to start in a place where it's the easiest to maintain. And you see why it's right here because I'm left handed. So everything's going to be on my left side. So most of the time when I'm doing this, I just realize I need my scissors. But more often than not, what I tell people is, you know, if you're going to do something like this, have something in the background, play music, watch something. 
just you know have a good time relatively because don't don't do a craft that's gonna you know bore you because trust me I'm gonna be honest this is a craft that will get boring very quickly and that's why I don't do a lot of sewing that's one of the biggest reasons why I haven't made any tails lately because it just got so boring it's not that I don't like it I can do it it's just I don't want to right now so let's get started first the first thing is check your water level and if you don't have a lot in there go ahead get that started because you're gonna need a lot of water for this I probably go through one to two things one to, one to two cups of water every time I do this and you want to try to get as much as you can you know just make sure you fill this thing up properly that'll do for now I don't want to overfill it all right so the thing the reason I'm doing this is because when you iron it it holds itself in place that should be a given there we go all right and obviously don't do what I did as you can see I left it sitting there way too long that's why I'm glad this is terry cloth and it's super cheap at Joann's and I can replace this crap anytime I want just haven't done it because I'm lazy because I kept cutting on it, I kept using it as a cutting board, and my bad, I didn't mean to do that. So it just ended up happening, I suppose. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let that hang. You want to basically soak the living crap out of this. And the reason being is because it'll be easier to work with. And if you leave the iron on a little too long, at least it won't mess it up. Now, obviously, you can't see it from your perspective, so let's get a ruler. I'll tell you from the ruler because I, I promise you I'm not lying about how big it is. Wait a minute, wrong set. Hey, there it is. That's the one I was looking for. Oh, you can't see it on camera. You can barely see it. There it is. That's the one I need because this ruler I can actually use way freaking better. What I highly recommend is try not to get it above like half a centimeter, which is about right there, which half a centimeter, if I'm correct, well, no, your, my fingernail is about a, is about a centimeter long. Um, is that from top to bottom? Make you my top and bottom. <laughs> but try not to get it above a centimeter. Personally, I try to keep it about a centimeter. I try to. And that's mostly because that's that's what I call my safety my, my safety zone when I'm stitching because that will get so frustrating and the biggest thing you're going to have that's going to happen is when you flip this thing around to do more to it you'll notice that you're probably going to be pushing this side up from this side so it's going to go from this to this again because your iron is laying on it so let's go ahead and get this out of the way As I said before, what you're going to try to want to do in this circumstance is you want to try to keep this part down, which you're going to probably run it over at some point, and that's okay if you run it over, just try to go back over and push it back over and do that. But I do recommend always try keeping scissors on hand if you ever see like a spot you need to trim. But if it's wet, it may not like you, so try to like clean that up ever so slightly. You do want to try to have as little as possible through here. Originally what I was going to do is I was going to flatten it like this and then I was going to sew it over. But sew this all straight down and then I was gonna sew it again. So you would have actually seen like one, two, three lines. But then I realized that's such a dumb idea when I can easily just make it a little bit easier on myself and I can just do this part right here. So once again, You'll see what I'm doing. Once I get done with this, I'll show you what I mean by I'm going to fold this all down to itself and I'll show you what, like, how easy this is. So now you're probably asking, okay, you got all that out of the way, so what about right here? What are you gonna do? It's actually fairly easy. This is probably the, one of the easiest places to do this. 
again, no more than probably about a centimeter. I would say max a centimeter and a half to two centimeters. Maybe at some point I'll show you how I make. I've made one really impressive tie. It was really thick, but it was really nice. It was like something I would give to somebody if it's like like a present or something. I would make a super duper nice tie, which I'm really tempted. So oftentimes, this is what I recommend. If you need a really good press down, do that. So the other thing, I don't know if I ever explained this on one of my on one of my other ones, but definitely get yourself some flauntless. Is that what it's called? Faultless. My bad. Faultless. Faultless. I'll get it right in a minute. This stuff is pretty much starch in a can. So what you want to do with this, shake it up really good. All right. Wham. Leave it right there. Just let it sit. I went to go get this. It's for my camera. My camera's at like half, so I was like, you know, we need to keep my camera from dying. All right, so when you've got that down, I always recommend double checking it. This is about half an inch. And if you're not, if you don't like it, that's perfectly fine and understandable. You know, just try to fix it to the best of your ability and don't burn yourself. Just try your damnedest not to burn yourself. Oh yeah, see now it's really super stiff. So I'm gonna have to like drain, I'm just gonna have to drown it at the moment. Just to do a drown rat situation. So what I recommend is always keep a ruler on hand. And yes, I am this meticulous when I am creating something. I'm not kidding. I am this damn meticulous because I want it to look as professional as possible. I want it to look like it came out of a factory almost. And that is what people, people have asked me when they have seen my work, they have looked at my stuff and they have asked me straight up, where did you get your collar? Where did you make it? Where did it come from? And people are like, oh my God, that collar is amazing. And so I tell them, I make them. They're like, how did you make it look so good? I said, it's not complicated. It's not wanting to hold down in place, so... And yes, if you are not careful, you will burn your material if you're doing this. So please, be careful. Because if you're not careful with it, it will show. And it'll show that you were not careful and you have a brown mark. And I don't know if that'll come off. So I'm probably going to be the one to wear this one specifically because it'll come off. It won't come off probably very easily. So now we've got that. It's fine. It ain't going to go anywhere. It's creased. Now we're going to go to this side. If it does come up like that, it's not a big deal. Now, if you want to use starch spray the entire time and no water, I mean, I say go for it, but just remember, you're going to go through a lot of starch spray. I got to get more of this next time I can go to Walmart. Again, if you're going to do it, make sure that it is however short you want it, which I recommend a half a centimeter. It's because... You want to try to take up as little as possible on this stuff. Okay. And now we play the waiting game. Alright. That, well, no, that's still wet right there. Seriously? Alright, so this side is good to go. This side, actually, no, that side is good to go, but let's do it one more time right here. Let's try to get it. Well, hold on. Got it. I just wanted to hold itself in place. All right. So when you get to that point, what I recommend is that hot point, put it at the end. We don't want that point at the moment. Now, this is the fun part. Go ahead and do that. Throw that end off the side. Now, if you want to be like me and you want to try to be as meticulous as you possibly can, I totally get it. You want to try to get as much inside as possible and you want to try to keep it as clean as possible. And yes, I get it. That is a lot harder than you may think. What I recommend uh, a lot of times is like I said before, soak the living crap out of it, make sure it's flat, and try to get 
it as good as possible. Lay it flat like this and once it gets into place, I really do highly recommend uh, if you want it to stay in place, again, we're going to use more basically, actually, we're not going to use starch yet. We will use starch in a minute. I'm going to get this all ironed down and then I'm going to starch it. I had a feeling that was gonna happen. This is why I'm glad it's mine. So uh, I'm gonna pause for just a minute to explain something. Now, I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but right through here, is, this is where I was thinking about this earlier and I was thinking about saying it, but I was like, you know, it ain't that big of a deal probably. But if you ever see any, like if you use a black Sharpie and you know it can be pulled through because of how thin the material is, cut it off. Go ahead and just Ram that little bit off if you can. If you can find a way to not have that happen. And honestly, if you can get a hold of like black chalk, different colored chalk, I highly recommend it. When I work with uh, different fabrics, the darker the fabric, the more than light, more than likely I am capable of using chalk. And I do highly recommend when you're working with, if you're going to be using regular chalk and you want to get like a point on it, just go get yourself a cheap little. Um, uh, what is it called? A pencil. Just get a pencil sharpener and just sharpen it. Yeah, you're going to lose a little bit, but hey, you can now go along and do this bit with it. I mean, I have another piece of chalk ready. There's a really good piece. Of, there's a type of chalk that's really, really good. I saw online it's like $12 a box, but it's the way that it's, it's made out of like a, a type of clay. It's not just normal chalk. But anyways, I do highly recommend if you can get rid of that point that, that if you end up using a black sharpie like I did, don't make my mistake and um, just clean it off. It's really not a big deal. One good thing to remember is, uh, do if you if you can keep it ever so slightly moving, like even just a little bit, it will keep it from um, burning it ever so slightly. But I would say the longest you should ever leave it on there is probably about 30 seconds to max like 45 seconds because unless it is absolutely drenched in water, this will this will dry very quick, especially the type of linen that you're using. Now because this is the side that was just done with, hot, 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 hot. Now this, because this is the side that I just did, what I highly recommend is uh, flipping it over and using the starch like I said. So now I'm going to go ahead and drench it in starch. Alright, so a lot of times it's okay to let it sit. It ain't the end of the world. As you can hear, hang on, let me take my microphone off. As you'll hear. Can't tell me that ain't a cool sound. The starch will definitely help it hold its place, and that's relatively what you want to do. Now, if you want to do it one more time, I mean, yeah, go for it, but like, you probably don't need to. But just, if it looks like it's still wet, you probably do need to reapply some heat to it and just slowly go down on it that's what she said and try to get it as even as you can that's my main goal when I make one of these I try to line it up with each side as much as I can for it to come out looking nice now if yours does anything like mine you're gonna have a little leakage all right I think that looks good so the next step is obviously pinning, and I'm going to show you how to pin this properly. I've noticed some people, when they make points on things, they don't when I've seen how things are pinned. I'll show you a good way that will not hurt your, your uh, sewing machine. And the best thing to do is make sure that that's where you want it. Have it put the point. You want to put it not, I wouldn't say, don't try to put it directly at the tip, but close enough. So what I'm going to do... I usually do it about that out, that much out. I have hiccups all of a sudden. And just, 
I say don't have them too close to each other because if you're going to be making a bunch at a time, you want to try to have just enough in them to hold it in place. That's really all you want. Ow. Also, I personally try to keep them even so when they, they just line up, like they look a little bit more even. That's my personal opinion. Anyways, let me go ahead and pin this. Won't take me but a couple seconds on fast mode. All right. So again, just try to have it, have the pins in a way that will hold it together. So we finally have them all pinned. The next best thing is actually the, like I swear, when you start sewing it, the sewing is the easiest and fastest part of all of this. I literally don't even have to speed it up to show you how long it takes. What I recommend when you're making one of these, uh, try to match, or I say go with either black or white, depending if you don't have anything close to it or you don't feel like matching a color, black and white is really good and probably the easiest to work with. But because I have more white than black right now and this is all I've got left, including this one, but this is an extremely heavy duty version and I don't wanna waste it right now. So we're not gonna waste this heavy duty version of, uh, I don't even know what this brand is. I don't even know where I got this. But all I know is it's, Heavy duty as bug. Where's my mini ones go? I think they're sitting over here somewhere. Oh, there they are. By the way, like I said before, in one of my in my other sewing video, tiny scissors, amazing. I love these things. What do I just do with that? Oh, right here it is. I just want to clean that off. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and start. But here's the thing I'm gonna tell you right now. Your best bet in all of this, in my opinion, is to try to get it as close to it as possible. And if you don't know how close you are, always check with this little guy and just try to see, okay, is that where I want it? No, let's make it a little bit closer. We're on four, so. Oh, that is really close. That is not, that is too close. So we're gonna put it about three away, so. There we go. Try to get it, go ahead and just run off the edge. There's nothing wrong with running off the edge. Just make sure if you have like a tub under you that your pedal doesn't get messed up from this. Go ahead and run straight off the edge because that is completely okay. And honestly, get yourself a small ramekin. Put all your extra needles in there. But because the way that I do this, I don't take, I stop taking the needles out, so it ain't a big deal anymore. Let's try to keep it right about where that's at. Ooh, let's get right about there. And Okay. Sometimes this will happen and it's not the end of the world. Just push it a little bit. Try to keep it as even as possible. And it is make sure. Perfect. And remember the tiny scissors? This is where they will come in handy. Technically, we could consider this done if we didn't want to put any uh, buttons in it. Let me take these pins out. What I recommend with this part, just tie it off just to be safe. So in case, you know, you've ever had any problems with uh, stitching before, you always want to make sure that you have just enough right here and try to try to clean up the stitching as much as possible. All right. So as you can see, this is technically done. But again, it's going to be the... Uh, this is where it's going to become bullshit. You're going to be like, oh god, I see why. So the next part of this is the part I hate the most. I'm going to need one of these. And luckily, they come in a pack. I put them all in a pill bottle, but I'll show you what they come in. I already have some extras. These are about four bucks. You can get them in the craft section at Walmart. Just get this, because you're going to have one of these. This is all you're relatively going to need. So, god, 
here's the most annoying part. So what I usually do is I figure out where I want to put it and then I usually get like a sharpie. It ain't the end of the world if you use a sharpie on this spot because nobody's probably going to notice that part anyways. So we're going to put it, we want it to sit sort of like this so luckily this sharpie does bleed so we're going to do this. I should see it, yep there we go. As you can see, see it on that side. Most of the time you don't really need to worry about that because it'll more than likely, once you get the first part in, you get the idea. So the way that I do this is, and honestly, I'm glad I thought about this. Glad I put them in a pill bottle because my niece is almost two years old and she's still, she can't open pill bottles, so that's great. I'll show you all the pieces you need to get. You're gonna need, if I'm right, four of these, four different things. Well. Three different things technically two of one thing so don't know how well you can see these but this is your little cl clampy thing that hurts to hold if you press down on it you get two of those you get two of these little things with a tiny ass hole in it and then the piece that holds it all together it's just this little piece i had some other ones too and unfortunately when i first started doing this i thought I was going to be using this guy. No, this is for heavy duty applications. So if you have like a pair of jeans that need fixing that have a busted button, give one to me and I can fix it. That is how this button right here works. You see how that is? I see you. So pretty much you make a hole on that side, a hole on that side, and you do it. The pieces are in here. And you know, honestly, what's funny is that this was not even made for this originally. This was actually created for my scissors, and then when I realized that that is the perfect fit for that, I was like, that's actually awesome. So, this is just something I made because I was bored. It looks, in my opinion, I could remake this thing. It just it looks like garbage in comparison, but it's got all the spots to carry everything, including my other, my main scissors, which is like this. I literally, if I, like, I made this because I was thinking, okay, what if I go to a convention, and then the next day, like that day, I hear somebody saying, oh, we need another tailor or something. We need somebody to fill in tomorrow. I'll be like, oh, well, who can do it? I'd be saying, they'd be like, I can do it. I'd have some supplies like this right here. I'd be like, I got my stuff. So now you're going to get to see why this is the part I hate the most. I dread this. Oh, God. You're going to see why I dread this so much. So I'm going to move the camera over there to the table so you'll see what I'm talking about. So first of all, make sure that when you're making this, that it sits like this, or obviously sits like that. It doesn't matter, this just has to fold like that. That is the biggest thing you wanna make sure of. So, let me put these back on my desk. So again, as you may remember, oh, shiznits, I don't, I, I don't wanna lose this. Real quick, a uh, little thing about my scissors. I actually made something, I have this like fake scaly leather. I did that, I made, I made this for it. I was just like, that's so fun. That was like just in case if I'm like, I leave my scissors out and I don't want to actually pick them up when I stab myself. Or if like somebody else needs my scissors, be like, there we go. So I can send them over there. Okay, so I'm procrastinating. You're going to need this guy. And the way that this works is you're going to put this little thing, this one with the teeth, you're going to put it right here push it down make sure that it sits in place or at least thereof and I say start my personal opinion start with this one the one with the um, like the like the tip pointing up you're gonna push that down inside of it make sure it's in there you want to make sure you see that and then see where that dot is right there push it through make sure that you push it all the way through I'm just gonna zoom in on just, I'm gonna zoom in on, on Camtasia, screw it. All right, so here is the part I hate because this is the most annoying part. You cannot, and I'm not kidding, you will not be able to push this down with your bare freaking hands unless you are some sort of muscle man, okay? So you're gonna need two tools for this. Get yourself a mallet or a hammer, and I highly recommend getting yourself a hammer like this. Like a, this, is, this was my granddad's, and now it's mine. I put tape on it as a handle. It's not actually broken, except this does like to fall off, so. Please, for the love of God, work the first time. Ow, I hit my thumb a little bit. Yeah, you're gonna hit your thumb. Don't even think about it, you're gonna be like, well, shit. Oh, thank Christ. Okay, so the reason I say that, let me explain why. These teeth 
do not always like going in. Sorry, I keep forgetting where the camera is. The teeth don't like going in fully a lot of times. And what you're gonna do, there you go. That should fix it. If you're not entirely sure, I took some pliers. As you see, I put some tape on it so I wouldn't accidentally hurt anything. I recommend just making sure, clamping it down pretty good. Man, I keep doing it where you can't see it on camera because I'm, it's because I'm left-handed. Everything gets backwards. Yes, I said backwards, even if it's not a word. So put your hand right about here, just twist and pull. Just make sure that none of the teeth are sticking out again. And yes, I'm gonna warn you now, you will more than likely go through a bunch of these little teeth things. You will go through a bunch of them. I'm sorry you will, but it's gonna happen. So again, you wanna make sure that when you do this, that wherever that wherever you do the first lineup, you make sure that you put it in the right spot because if you don't, you will end up doing this. And I have done that. It will piss you off because you're gonna have to grind that thing out. And yes, you can actually take these out with your teeth. I found that out the funny way because I was like, what can I do? How do I do this? <sighs> All right, we're almost done. Very, very close. So one more time, we're gonna do basically the same thing. We're just gonna go ahead and press this in. Now you may not get this perfect and that's okay. It just shows character, you know? Just make sure that goes all through the fabric as you see like that. You see how it's pushed through the fabric. God, my tutorial's gonna suck. Eh, it's a whatever video. You're gonna take this little thing, and this is what I recommend. This is probably, I'm hoping I've been doing this right the whole time. It does work, so here you go. You see that right there? Put that right here. You wanna make sure that as you, I don't know if you can see that on the inside, but look on the inside and if you can see like the little pieces, like you can see something look like it's pointing up, that's what you want right there. So what you're gonna do all the way around, you're gonna make sure, I'm gonna, I'll tell you from the description here in a second, I'll just describe it because it's gonna be harder to do it that way. You wanna make sure that this is proper because those teeth will not push down inside. Take this side, you're gonna do, you're gonna make sure, like I said, hold the teeth in place because this will fall. Make sure that that is sitting firmly inside that little circle again, like you saw me do it the first time. This is the most annoying part of it. Now you probably can, you probably can palm it down and it probably will stay, but I don't trust that shit and I'm gonna hammer it in. And I highly recommend, anytime you're doing this, my biggest recommendation of all time is always make sure when you're doing this, these will break. These do break. You saw how I had another one? Just keep buying them. It doesn't matter. Don't try to buy them unless you have like some sort of little thingy. Yeah, see, that's pushing up on it, which means I'm going to have to use the pliers real quick. Again, this will get annoying, but you do want to make sure that the teeth are in properly because if the teeth aren't in properly, Again, like I said, it will happen. As you see, the teeth are sticking outward. That came right off. I highly recommend just trash both of them. You can't, you, you're not gonna be able to salvage this little guy. It's been all bent out of shape. Oh, my neck. And frankly, don't just, just throw it away. It will happen from time to time, and that's why I'm doing it in tutorial mode, because I want you to understand that from time to time you will mess up, you will have mistakes, and that's okay. You, it's all about trial and error. I, if I had my old tail still, you would be like, holy crap, the very first tail I ever made looked like this Frankenstein tail, and it was just WTF. What, what did you try to, like, it, it looks like, when you look at it, you go, what were you trying to accomplish situation is what it looked like, honestly. So let's try that one more time. Take this. Oh no no no, we're not gonna do that. You want it, you want it to look like with this little guy, you want it to look like it's going inward. So that's where it is. The reason you want it to is because then it'll be able to go, it'll push upward, and you'll be like, oh, that makes way more damn sense. You know what? I'm gonna sit. Let me sit for this shenanigans. Please, I pray to the sewing gods that this works. <laughs> First of all, I'm gonna line this up to see where it sits right now. All right, that's fine. Please, I have gone through 
I have legit at one time gone through four of these. Four or five of them and they just, it didn't want to hold. And it was just a pain in the ass to try to make sure that it went through. Seriously? Just be careful. If you do this too many times, yes, it is possible that at some point it will rip. And if you rip it, you might as well start from scratch. I was told that there is also a little clamp gun too, but I've not seen that, and the one I've got will not do that, so I'm not even gonna attempt to try to do something like that. I went and I grabbed another one, because I just grabbed the one I was just talking about, and it was just easier to grab it, because whatever. I'm gonna see if I'm right. Ugh. This, is so, this is why it takes me so long. If I could get these buttons on in a heartbeat, then yeah, sure. But no. I'm not allowed to just put a fucking button on one of these goddamn piece of shits. Fucking bullshit, dude. There's no way I'm not doing this right because I tested it a minute ago and I looked at it and I'm like, okay, clearly that's how it goes in because it wouldn't make sense to do it the other way. Seriously, I need a tool that just pushes this inward because if it did, it'd be so much more convenient. But no, go figure. That's too easy. God. You know what? I'm going to try something real quick. idea what, what what how how what the fuck how did you get fucked up dude god i hate buttons so much i'm about to just make them decently long and i'm just gonna tell people to tie them literally tie them that's what i'm gonna do <coughs> i'm gonna make it long ways and then i'm gonna cut them and they're gonna go down to here and then i'm just gonna say i'm gonna show you how to tie them because I can probably, I, I probably can. Come on, please just work. Please, I have done this. Please, just hold your fucking shape. Why is it, why, why, why? Uh, come on, dude. This is not fair at this fucking point. Dude, this is not fair. I've wasted six of these. I don't get why this is so fucking difficult. I, I've never wasted this many before. If these were magnetic, sure, that would make sense, but they're not even magnetic. At least I could hold them together if they were magnetic. I'm gonna have to invest in something that can fucking do it, dude. I don't... Oh my fucking Christ! That worked! For some fucking reason, using this over this and just holding it in place and then clamping it down fucking work. That is fucking stupid, dude. <sighs> okay. That was frustrating. But if you do it right, you should end up with something like this. Now, it doesn't really matter if you want to, like, you can button it any way you want, so... If you want to do it like this, and you want this side to be the, like if you, whatever. If you want it left to right, right to left, whatever, the only thing that I say make sure of doing is just make sure it sits like this, and you have a Waffle House tie. Now, again, like I said, you can make it with a point. You don't have to make it with a point. It's whatever, dude. So, here's an original that I made of like about a week and a half ago. Now, I made this one about a month ago. They're about the same length. The only real difference is, is this has a point. They're about, this is a little bit longer, but I may do an experiment to where I may make an actual tie, like a, like a really nice tie, like something like longer than this, but. Oh my God, that was so frustrating. Because frankly, it just, these, these things, freaking piss me off dude I this is what I dread the most I need to find a way I need to find some more of these some that aren't a pain in the ass and I was thinking about like doing magnets inside of them because at least there are these sellable magnets that I can do that'll sit in place 
And the reason I, I do want to warn you is if you do decide to do it and then you, you end up with that, it will end up doing this. It'll fall like this, and I know this from uh, practice because basically what happens is if you, if you do it wrong, it'll fall, it'll fall like this. Don't do that. Be very careful on that. It, it, it has happened before. So there you go. There is a Waffle House tie. I know, you're probably thinking, but that just looks like one long piece of fabric. It is. Ugh. But hey, the girls at Waffle House say they're cute and adorable, and I can just bust them out most of the time. I'm probably gonna have to start doing that. I'm gonna have to hold it in place and then clamp it down all the way around and be like, done. Da! Thank you for watching my video. If you liked my video, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and come back for more videos. I hope that it was entertaining, and I hope that you had a good time watching it. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. I don't know. That's all up to you. But I hope it was useful in any kind of knowledge if you want to learn something new. So again, thank you for watching and come back for more of my content anytime you want. Later!